Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. As voters in 14 states prepare to head to the polls tomorrow for Super Tuesday, we have a new poll this morning showing how Californians are expected to vote. We'll break down the results. Firefighters attack a massive blaze in an East Bakersfield gym. We'll show you the fiery scene coming up. And the former elementary school principal convicted of killing her husband is due back in court today to learn her sentence on this Monday, March 2nd, 2020. Good morning, 5 a.m. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. And March kind of came in with a little bit of a lion, I guess, as you could say, maybe a baby lion, at least for our uh, mountain communities waking up with snow this morning. Yeah, over the evening, uh, grapevine was being paced by CHP. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and check on what's going on with that storm, Kev. Yeah, as we mentioned last week, it was going to brush Kern County, and we didn't see any rain here in the valley. We did see a little bit of that snow. I told you the snow level would drop. So really, the focus was over the grapevine because that's where most of that moisture was heading to the south. Now, on Friday, we hit that record. You know, we talked about it was going to be warm. 83 degrees was our high, and uh, shattering the old record of 81 to sit back in 1926. No records for you today, and things have quieted down. A little bit of cloud cover still over the grapevine right now, but all the snow has come to an end. 42 degrees in Bakersfield right now. We have a southeast wind at 6 under clear skies and we're looking at a sunny day and temperatures will be in the 60s, no 80s. And then for the mountains, we are holding at 30 right now. A north wind at 6, and it shows visibility is down to a mile out of the airport, so you may be looking at some low clouds. I'm not sure if Maddie was seeing that as she drove in this morning, just going by the observations here. And then upper 40s to start today, and then throughout the day, we're going to keep it relatively cool and seeing uh, daytime highs into the 50s by 3. I'll have much more on your forecast coming up, but first, let's get a check of the morning commute. We'll send that over to Alex. All right, thanks so much, Kev. And we're talking about some of your uh, some of the road closures that are put in place right now because of the snow and ice, especially in the mountain communities. Uh, there are a few roads up in County Val- near County Valley Road uh, that are going to be closed, so keep that in mind. And CHP also says that it's, there are some roads near Pine Mountain Club that are going to be uh, chain only, uh, chain required. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well. Now here on the Valley floor, things are looking pretty good to start off your Monday morning. We'll have another check of your morning commute coming up in about 15 minutes. All right, we begin with some breaking news this morning in downtown Bakersfield. A fire broke out on H and 25th Streets just after midnight. Here's a live look at the scene. It's not clear what started the fire, but it burned for several hours. Firefighters are still in the area this morning. It looks like there's still smoke visible. So, yeah, this has been several hours ongoing now um, that firefighters are still on scene. This is H and 25th Streets in downtown Bakersfield. We'll continue to track this for you and bring you updates throughout the morning. Yeah, we even got reports that smoke was being uh, even going into the Oildale area. So a lot of smoke this morning. Meantime, a huge fire broke out at an abandoned gym in East Bakersfield. Take a look at this video of the fire. Firefighters responded to the fire on Nile Street around 7 o'clock last night. Firefighters say it took them several hours to contain the flames. Sections of Nile Street were closed off while crews fought the blaze. There's no word on what caused the fire, and no injuries have been reported. A new poll you'll only see on Channel 17 shows that Senator Bernie Sanders with a double-digit lead in California this morning ahead of Super Tuesday. Now, these results indicate the second-time presidential candidate may reinforce his status as the 2020 race's Democratic frontrunner. 17's Taylor Schaub joins us now with the exclusive results. Taylor? Good morning, Maddie and Alex. And with one day left until Super Tuesday, our parent company, Next Star Media Group, and Emerson College released a comprehensive poll Sunday evening showcasing the Vermont senator as California's current leading choice for president. Well, what we see in California is Bernie Sanders with a much larger lead than we expected here. Uh, Obviously, this was a state that he lost by about seven points to Hillary Clinton four years ago, and now he's looking for maybe a little revenge against Joe Biden after that South Carolina victory on Saturday. And it looks like he's right around that the mid to high 30s, and that would give him a substantial victory on Tuesday. Um, What is changing and the dynamics have changed is Tom Steyer and Pete Buttigieg have now left the race and combined they were around seven, eight percent of the vote in California. So it'll be interesting to see if that vote shifts over and most likely to Joe Biden. 
The poll also had voters here in California weigh in on issues important to them, chief among them health care. What we see in California amongst Democratic voters is what we're kind of seeing around the country, and that is health care. Uh, voters really are concerned about health care, and it's their number one issue. And not only that, but that's what's driving Bernie Sanders' success, because about 40 percent of them think he's got the best health care policy. And that's what's really helping him in, the, uh, in uh, California. The survey also addressed a crisis close to Kern County, homelessness. So when we ask the question about homeless people and if we should be doing more to take care of them, about two thirds of Democratic primary voters say yes. And you can see that's where Bernie Sanders is able to talk directly to voters. And that's the subject of 17, uh, this morning's 17's interactive poll. We've been asking, with California in the midst of a homeless crisis with approximately uh, one or uh, 150,000 people living on the streets, should mandatory housing and mental services be implemented across the state for homeless people? Uh, right now, we just put this poll up. We have four people saying yes, three people saying no. And uh, if you would like to vote, you can call or text 661-888-4617. Press 1 if you think yes. Press 2 for no. You can tweet, text, go on our Facebook. We'd love your comments, and we'll air them later coming up at 6. Yeah, again, this is a poll that you will only see here on TV 17 this morning in Kern County. And it's interesting to see these results come out ahead of tomorrow's Super Tuesday. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. All right, thanks, Taylor. Well, early voting took place Saturday here in Kern County ahead of Super Tuesday. Registered voters dropped off their ballots at a curbside drop-off on Saturday. Many voters showed up to avoid the long lines expected during voting tomorrow. Early voting took place at the Kern County Elections Office at the County Administrative Building. It's located at 1115 Truxton Avenue. Again, Election Day is tomorrow, so there's still time to cast your ballot and go through the drive-thru once again tomorrow. And just a reminder, tomorrow is your chance to vote, and we'll bring you coverage all day long about what's on your ballot and where you can go to vote. Make sure to tune in tomorrow morning, starting on sunrise. It's 5.07 now. Another horse had to be euthanized over the weekend at Santa Anita Park. This marks the eighth horse death of the year. The horse suffered a fracture in its left front ankle. A veterinarian determined the five-year-old horse could not recover, and it had to be euthanized. Since last year, more than 20 horses have died. This issue goes back to 2018, when an investigation into the safety of the park was launched by L.A. County officials. The L.A. District Attorney did not find anything wrong, but after another string of deaths, the investigation was opened again in March 2019. In your 17 Court Watch, it is a case we've been following very closely here on TV 17. Leslie Chance is scheduled to be sentenced this morning for murdering her husband, Todd, in 2013. Now, you may remember the former school principal was convicted of deliberately and with premeditation to killing her husband in 2013. Farm workers found Todd's body in an almond orchard off Enos Lane and Noriega Road. Prosecutors argued Chance plotted out the murder and even attended a CSI seminar to learn how to cover up the crime. All because of Todd's flirtation with an ex-girlfriend. Chance's sentencing is set for 8.30 this morning and our cameras will be there to bring you the latest. She faces up to 50 years to life in prison. You can find all of our past coverage on this case on our website kget.com. 508 now. Last week, two restaurants closed because of health code violations here in Kern County. Now one of them is open again. More on that story when we come back. Welcome back. It's 521. New City City Manager Christian Clegg is officially joining the city of Bakersfield today. Clegg was selected from a pool of candidates provided by recruiter Roberts Consulting Group Incorporated. Clegg has 14 years of experience working in local government, including five years as Deputy City Manager for the city of Stockton. Clegg says he is excited to serve Bakersfield and is eager to plant roots in a community that his family can call home. Two restaurants in Bakersfield closed down last week. Now one of them is opening back up. India Bistro on Ming Avenue was shut down after inspectors pointed out a bacteria issue. They say the restaurant stayed open even while sewage overflowed into the facility. The restaurant did not have an environmental health permit posted. Also, yesterday, though, India Bistro opened back up. Kern County Public Health Services Department 
uh, gave the Village Grill in downtown Bakersfield a score of just 58% and also shut that restaurant down. As of now, Village, Cr Village Grill remains closed. No word on when that may reopen. A shot spotter activation led to the arrest of an armed driver in East Bakersfield. Police say Manuel Vargas Mercado was arrested in the 800 block of Pacific Street. Officers say they were in the area when they saw a car driving away. Officers discovered Mercado was driving without a license and lived at the location of the shot spotter activation. Officers say they found the handgun you see on your screen in the car. It had an expended shell casing in the chamber and nine live rounds in the magazine. Vargas Mercado was arrested for weapon charges. It's unclear when shot spotter activation and the arrest happened. A San Diego man is accused of driving a U-Haul through a crowded street. What police know about the driver and how the people he reportedly ran over are doing this morning. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. It's 525 this morning. The Federal Communications Commission has proposed $200 million in fines against the four major phone companies in the United States. The FCC fines are being proposed for companies alleging uh, improper disclosure of customers' real-time location. The phone companies have supposedly allowed outside companies to track the locations of wireless devices without telling the customers. It's against federal law for telecommunication companies to release information about customer location. The chairman of the FCC, Ajit Pai, said that fr on Friday that T-Mobile's fines amount to $91 million, AT&T's $57 million, Verizon faces $48 million, and Sprint $12 million in fines. A boost in coronavirus cases in Italy results in restricted travel to the country. Two major carriers, Delta and American, are suspending flights to Milan. Trips to Rome are unaffected. Italian officials say the country has nearly 1,700 confirmed cases with 34 deaths. Italy has the highest number of cases in the world outside of Asia. The United Nations says the rise in cases in Italy as well as Iran and South Korea is deeply concerning. Chances are there are some hidden treasure tucked away somewhere in your home or your wallet, hidden only because you've forgotten about it. Details now from NBC's Chris Clackham. They've become the go-to gift for any occasion, most recently Christmas, but they're the gift most likely to be forgotten. Collectively, Americans have about $21 billion worth of unused gift cards and other store credits. A recent bank rate survey found half of us have lying around gift cards, vouchers, or store credits worth, on average, $167. More if you're a millennial. Close to $250 worth for each millennial in this study. Bank rates, Ted Rossman says, across the board, these unused bits of treasure are a serious issue. This is real money. People need to take advantage of this. My number one tip is take inventory of what you have. Put those old gift cards to use. Use either for yourself or use for regifting. Just don't hang on to them. Inflation could erode some of that buying power. If a store goes out of business, the gift card could be worthless. Another reason why the best time to use even the best gift cards is now. Chris Clackham, NBC News. Coming up, presidential hopeful Pete Buttigieg suspended his campaign what this means for anyone in California that may have already voted for him.